Hey, good morning, New Dawn family. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Joanne. Good morning. How Pastor are you? Joanne. I'm good. I'm good. I'm feeling good? good. Yeah. Yeah, I think you have appropriate colors on today for the message that's going to go forth. We have Ooh. a special guest with us today. It's going to be awesome. Yes, But can't we'll talk wait. about that in a minute. We want to welcome you guys this morning. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. You know, Joanne and I just got back um, this past week. We got a, a chance to get away for our anniversary. And a lot of you guys know that our anniversary is in July. We've been trying to go since then, but obviously with COVID and everything, and it just opened up for us to travel. And uh, we just feel so good. And um, I'm, yes. I'm tan, you know, tanner than normal, yes. I guess. And so... Yeah, we just were so, so blessed. And so uh, God is good. Amen. I just believe so much that it's not an accident that you're watching today. We believe that God has this word for you that's going to be transformational. We've been setting our hearts, preparing for, uh, you know, and during this Advent season. I'm going to explain that in a minute, but we just... Uh, God is preparing us, I say this prophetically, for something so powerful uh, in this season, in this Christmas season, amen. And so we're just not just doing, uh, you know, just church as normal, if you want to say, but we are have our hearts expectant for something powerful that God wants to do, amen. Amen. Yeah. And we are so glad that you tuned in today. We're glad that you're joining us wherever you are. And we just are here believing, trusting that God is going to meet your need, whatever it is today. So if you have any prayer requests, go ahead and post them below. Or if you'd like to send a private message, you can send it to prayer at newdawnla.com. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. And for those of you that are visiting for the first time, uh, if you want more information on our church, maybe you don't have a church and you're looking for one, and maybe by the end of this service, you'll be like, you know what, let me, co let me connect with uh, this ministry. You know, you can email us at connect at newdawnla.com. Connect at newdawnla.com. We want to send you uh, some information to help you to grow spiritually. And uh, we would love to, like I said, connect with you, talk with you. Amen. So my wife is going to pray. We're going to go right into worship. And the minister Tasia is going to be leading us. And she is an awesome, awesome uh, worship leader. You're going to be blessed this yeah. morning. Amen. So let's set our hearts ready to pray. And uh, we're going to get right into it. Go ahead. Yes, Pastor let's Jonah. pray. Well, Father, we just worship you and adore you today, Father yes, God. Father. We just thank you for this is the day that you've made, Father God. We trust you. We look to you today, Father. We thank you, Father God, that no matter yes, what we're Father. going through, that you are big enough that you are great enough, Father God, to minister to every need in our life, Father. We just give our circumstances to you, Father. We give you our fears, Father God. We give you, Father, any kind of heartache, Lord, or heaviness, Father, anything that we're going through, Lord. And we thank you that, Father, you haven't given us a spirit of fear. You've given us a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. And we thank you, Lord God, that we're going to trust your word above anybody else's word, above the news, above the bad reports, Father. We're going to trust you yeah. because you are good. So, Father, we thank you, Lord. Give us faith today, Father, to trust you and to obey you in the name of Jesus. Jesus, and we just prepare our hearts to go into a time of worship and to hear the word that you have for us today. Let it touch our hearts and minister to our lives and let it move mountains, Lord, and change what's inside of us, Father yeah. God, and turn it from from our, our what's been bad, Father, to turn it for our good. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it. Amen. 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 Hey, listen, let's get ready for worship. And I believe God is going to minister to you today. We believe that so much. Invite someone, start a watch party right now. You know, send this link to someone if you're watching through YouTube. Amen. We love you guys. We'll see you in a moment. Let's get ready for worship. such an honor to be with you this morning yet another Sunday I encourage you to worship the Lord with us because our God is such an awesome God he's a mighty God and we love him so much and we just want to show him through our worship this morning how amazing he is come on and sing with us Lord you are awesome If it 
your grace I don't know where I'd be without you Lord, you are awesome Lord, you are awesome Lord, you are awesome Lord, you are awesome If it wasn't for your love wasn't for your grace I don't know where I'd be without you without a sail, going to and fro, no direction without my Savior. I want you to make this declaration with me this morning that He is awesome. Right where you are, just sing, You are awesome. Here we go. You are awesome. 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 hallelujahs belong to you our hearts everything our very being belongs to you and we just want to express that this morning because you deserve it you deserve it you're such a good father and I thank you Lord for just your unconditional love for us hallelujah Lift it up and sing this out. Sing this out. You 
glory belongs to you. All of the glory belongs to you. Let's sing it out. You deserve it. You deserve it. You Hey guys, we are back here. Wasn't that incredible worship? Man, I love Minister Tasia, and that was really, really great. You know, um, I'm so excited about today's service. I've been anticipating this for weeks, uh, you know, because of the topic. And the topic today is going to be about joy. You know, when we use the word Advent, Advent is not in the Bible. It's not a biblical term in the Bible. But, you know, Advent, what I, the way I look at Advent is basically like a structure to prepare our hearts for the Christ child, or really because Jesus already came, it's preparing our hearts for this season and really what Christ is all about. You know, when we deal with Advent, we actually deal with it from two perspectives. You know, one was preparing our hearts for for Christ and what he wants to do in this season, uh, this Christmas season. But it's also, you know, there's the second coming of Christ where we want our hearts to be ready for, uh, for the Lord. We want to prepare our hearts. And so I really love this season and really just preparing our hearts. And we're going to prepare our hearts in the attitude of joy. I believe our joy is going to go to another level. You know, so, so a, a couple of uh, weeks ago, we talked about hope, right? And then last week we talked about love. But this week we're going to light the candle of joy. Joy, Amen. We're going to light the candle of joy and just getting ready our hearts. And like I said, in a week and a half, two weeks, you know, we're, we're, we're already at Christmas. So it's going to be a beautiful time. So, uh, you know, uh, Pastor Joanne, if you wouldn't mind, if you wouldn't take that and just we're going to light this candle and uh, we're going to just 
you know, and this is just symbolic as she's doing this. It's just symbolic of our hearts, right? We want God to light our hearts in the area of hope, love, joy. And, you know, the last one we're going to talk about next week is peace, right? Hope, love, joy, and peace. We want to be full of this. We want to get our hearts ready for what God is going to do. Please don't go into this Christmas season just, uh, you know, it's just another Christmas season. I'm, I'm inundated with family stuff. What am I going to do? Where am I going to go? What gifts am I going to buy? Come on, you know, we really got to get our hearts. I, I am telling you as, as a pastor and as a man of God that prophetically there is something supernatural about the season that I believe God is getting our hearts ready for. And you know, Joanne, we have a treat today. Uh, my, uh, well, not my, our dear good friend, Pastor Joe, he's actually here with his wife and he's going to present her in a moment. So the next voice you hear after you watch this video, uh, you're going to see them and, and, and they're going to be on here and he's going to share a word about joy and let me just prep this real quick a lot of you guys already know pastor joe his church and his ministry has been such a blessing to new dawn and and different uh times that we've needed to meet somewhere do communion services he lets us use his church he's so he's so generous to us but i, I will say this even though he's a senior pastor i also believe he's a prophet and i and i believe god has just put a powerful uh, word in his heart for us today. Yeah. I can't think of anyone, honestly, Joanne, to, to share about joy more than him. Mm -hmm. And as a testimony, and I know I'm saying a lot as, a, as he comes ready to speak, but you know, I actually was on a phone call with him and we were talking and um, I had never been touched by the spirit of joy. Uh, like it was just something supernatural. I, I, I always wondered whether, you know, what that looked like and everything. Cause I saw people just really have like this crazy joy. And I, 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 just, I never encountered that. And, uh, you know, on talking the phone with Joe, with, uh, with Joe, we were praying <laughs> joy, with joy. We were talking <laughs> <Joy> with joy. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I'm telling you just the, the, the spirit of joy just hit me. And I, it was something overwhelming that I can't even explain. And I'll tell you, my brother Joe walks with such joy in his heart. And it's something that God has done. And I, I'm telling you, I'm just, I, I anticipate whatever he's going to share. I don't know what he's going to share, but I know it's about joy. And, and I'm excited about it. Amen. So Yes. Yeah. We are very excited. We are very excited. So listen, watch this video. And the next voice you hear is my dear good friend, Pastor Joe, and his awesome wife. Amen. Good morning, New Dawn. It's so good to be with you this morning. This is my wife, Andrea. I'm Pastor Joe. Um, we're just such good friends with, with your pastors. And I, I'm going to tell you what, I'm such good friends. with. I, I think he's like so handsome. I even have him on my phone. Look at that. He's my, <laughs> he's my, my, my home screen on my phone. Isn't that amazing? I just think he's like, I, I have kind of like a man crush on, on him. So... 
Hope you guys don't mind, but this, this is my wife Andrea. We've been married for 23 years. We've got four kids and we're just so happy to be a part of New Dawn. We're, we're actually a part of you. We're doing this Advent thing with you and it's so fun and I just feel so honored that Erwin would ask me to speak mm -hmm. and, and just be with you this morning. So yeah. thank you so much. Yeah, we really are happy to be here. And, um, you know, I was praying for you guys before um, we got here and I just felt like I had a word um, for some of you. And the word was that... Um, that the Lord just wants you to know that he is with you, that there's some of you that may be going through some things where you haven't seen your prayers answered, but he wants you to know he's so for you, he's so with you, and he really just wants you to know those prayers are going to be fulfilled. And you Come don't on. have to worry because he, he sees every little thing that you're going through, yeah. and he just wants to reassure you that he's got his eye on you. That's good. So. Yeah. yeah. Would you pray for us? Yeah, so we can I start? let's pray. Yeah, Jesus, I just thank you that we have the opportunity to be here today. And I thank you, God, for what you're doing in this amazing congregation, Lord. And we just ask, Holy Spirit, that you would just shower down upon every single person who's watching this right now, God, that you would just touch them with your love and with your power, God, and that you would just just do something new in yeah. each one of us today, God. We thank you. Mm -hmm. You are so good, and we love you so much, Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Right on. So we are doing, doing a series in Advent. And when I say we, I mean we. We're a family. So we're doing a series uh, on Advent, and I know I read up on it. It's, you know, the hope and anticipation of three things, the birth of our Savior, the reception of Jesus in the heart of every believer, and the second coming of Jesus. And these things, they do, they bring hope, they bring joy when you look forward to these things. And it's just so awesome. I, I, have, uh, I have so much joy in those three things, the birth of our Savior, the fact that He lives inside of me, and really, I have so much joy in knowing that this isn't it. Like there's more, right? We're going to see him face to face. No tears, no pain. It's going to be awesome. So that, that brings joy now. It's kind of like, you know, when you see uh, someone win a bunch of money and they get that huge check and they have so much joy. They don't have the money yet, right? They just have that big, huge check, but they know the money's coming. And that's kind of like what, how, how that hope brings us joy. Amen. So Pastor Irwin uh, asked me to speak about joy, and it's, it's a really fun, favorite subject of mine. And so I want to accomplish something today. I want to help you renew your mind so that you can feel joy 24-7. Wouldn't that be awesome? Joy 24-7. I, I have a confession. I, I, I do feel joy most of the time. It's very rare that I don't feel a sense of joy in me. In fact, yesterday I tried to be sad, but I couldn't. I really didn't have any reasons. And so I'm, I'm kidding about that. But I want to start with Romans chapter 5. Can you turn there with me? Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Okay, this is the Passion Translation. Our faith in Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us, and He now declares us flawless in his eyes. That's amazing. This means we can now enjoy true and lasting peace with God, all because of what our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One, has done for us. Verse 2, our faith guarantees us permanent access into this marvelous kindness that has given us a perfect relationship with God. What incredible joy bursts forth within us as we keep on celebrating our hope of experiencing God's glory. But that's not all. Even in times of trouble, we have a joyful confidence knowing that our pressures will develop in us patient endurance. And patient endurance will refine our character and proven character leads us back to hope. Verse five, and this hope is not a disappointing fantasy because we can now experience the endless love of God cascading into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who lives in us. In, in chapter 5, you know, the, the Romans road to heaven, you know, 
in the book of Romans, he's really laying out the gospel, right? But in chapter 5, he talks about having peace with God. It's interesting that he goes into trials. Why does he go into trials with having joy and having hope and having peace with God? Because in the Old Testament, they thought that trials meant that you weren't right with God. So there was a covenant, right, in the Old Testament. So that if you weren't living up with your end of the bargain, then God wouldn't live up to his end and you wouldn't be blessed. And so people who were not blessed, they figured there was something wrong with their lives. And so it was a test. It was like a symptom. Okay, if something's not going right in your life financially or health-wise or whatever, you better look to your heart because you're probably doing something wrong. You're disobedient in, in some sort of area. And so Paul is correcting this theology. In the New Testament, because we have peace with God, that, that's not the same economy anymore. Now there's a covenant of God's blessing on us no matter what. But also it means this. When you're facing trials, we don't anymore, we don't look to, oh gosh, what am I doing wrong? We don't think those thoughts anymore. That's an old covenant theology. Now we're like, okay, God, what are you going to do with this trial, right? And so that's why he's saying, even in that, you have peace. Even in that, you have hope. Even when you're in the midst of trials, you have hope because you have peace with God. What Jesus did creates this perfect relationship between you and God. It's done, right? And so why is he saying that? Why is it so important? With joy. With joy, we're, we're, I believe that we're a people who have joy most of the time. The joy of our salvation. We're, we are just excited about life and we are so thankful for God's love in our lives. But what is the one thing that steals our joy? Trials, right? And so if we can get, I, I decided a long time ago, if we could get really good at trials, then we could have joy 24-7. Wouldn't that be amazing? Because Jesus promised it. He promised that there would be trials and tribulations. So why not be really good at it, right? That's why this is important, because we're a joyful people. But there is no instance, there, there's no moments where we have to give up our joy. There, there's no circumstance that should steal our joy. And so we should be able to hold on to that 24-7, because joy is our birthright. Joy is our birthright. As a child of God, it is my birthright. Amen? Immovable joy is not found in your circumstances. It's not tethered to that. It's not anchored to your circumstances. And so no matter what your circumstances are doing, immovable joy says, I can have joy no matter what, right? If you want to have joy all the time, you must anchor your joy into something or someone that is immovable. It's like your salvation. If you think, I already know I'm saved and it doesn't bring you much joy, then let's get our hearts back into that. Like, let's revitalize our hearts back into the joy of our salvation. That's just one thing that brings us joy, right? How do we get our hearts back into something like that? Where once we found joy in our salvation, maybe now where it kind of seems like a distant thing. How do we get our hearts back into feeling joy about that? Well, in Matthew 6, it talks about where the, your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so you can actually change your heart by focusing on what's really valuable. And that's the joy of your salvation. Your salvation was bought with a tremendous price. And your salvation still to this day should bring about joy for you 24-7, right? So let's just continue to thank God for that. Also, trials have the potential to bring you much, much joy depending on your life's goal. So let me put it this way. What is God's goal for you? It's found in Romans 28, uh, 8, 28 and 29. Romans 8, 28, 29 says, And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God. So if it's not good, he's not done. Amen? But it also says, To those who are called according to his purpose. What is his purpose? For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed 
to the image of his son. So God's goal is that he would conform you into the image of his son. Well, if that's not your goal, then you're going to be frustrated in trials and tribulations. Because those are oftentimes the things that really transform us. Now, I'm all for prayer. When, when something happens to us, I get my intercessors, I email them, text them, hey, pray, I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not uh, looking for trials, right? I'm praying against them. I'm praying for blessing, of course. But when they come, are we miserable or do we see the potential? Because there is potential in every trial. And when you have the goal, when your goal is matched up to God's goal about being more like Jesus, then you see trials differently. You're like, oh, wow, this is going to create something in me. I remember when I was on a prayer walk one time, I was uh, whining to God as I sometimes do. And I was telling him, you know, revival hasn't come. I've been praying for years for revival and my prayers aren't answered. And God spoke to me and he said, do you want your prayers answered? I said, of course. And he said, change your prayers. And I was like, well, what, what should my prayer be? And he said, pray that you would become more like my son every day. And every day there will be an opportunity for that. Every day that prayer will be answered. And my mind was just blown because I had been telling God how to manage things, how to manage my own life. And I wasn't really submitting to his goal for me to transform me into the image of his son. And so then at trials and different things start to take on a new flavor. Like, oh God, what are you doing here? Oh, if, it's, if, if I'm partnering with your goal for me to transform me, then this must be doing something. Do you see? You see how uh, trials could have the potential for joy? And that's why James 1 says, consider it joy when you face many trials. Consider it joy. Because God's always on the move. He's not the, you know, we don't have the Old Testament covenant where when something's wrong, you're not in his good graces. No, when, when something's going wrong, there's a potential for God to do something in you and through you. Amen? So if you're unhappy, change your prayers. That's what God taught me. I have a friend uh, named Dan Bauman, and he grew up in our church, and he comes back. He's a missionary, but he comes back every year and speaks to us. And he was uh, visiting Iran with a team, and they were doing mission work in Iran. And so on the way back across the border, he got stopped. They thought he was, they accused him of being CIA. And so they put him in jail. They put him in jail and the church started praying. And his mom came to the, the first public prayer meeting for Dan to get him out of jail. His mom prayed this prayer, God, keep him there as long as you need him until your will is done. <laughs> Talk about a crazy prayer. Dan always says, I'm glad other people were praying. <laughs> because that's a heavy prayer, especially for a mom to pray over her son. She, she knew something. She knew that God was going to use him. She didn't fear his life. She just feared that, you know, that maybe his will wouldn't be done. She knew he was going to get out sooner or later. That's faith. But to, to pray that prayer, that, God, I know you're going to use him. You're going to work in him and you're going to work through him. In a heavy situation like that, he was, he was incarcerated for nine weeks, beaten every single day. And he befriended the one who beat him every day. And at the end of that, he reached out his hand, my, Dan, my friend Dan, and he said, if we're going to see each other every day, let's be friends. And the guy broke down weeping. And somehow he didn't know how. He'd never seen the guy again. He was released the next day. So God did something in a person in a prison that we as pastors, as missionaries, could probably never reach except for that instance, except for that situation. God wanted to touch that guy's heart. He, God saw a treasure there and he wanted to reach him. And he used my friend Dan. Did Dan go through a whole lot? He sure did. But how many of us ask God, use me, God, I'm available. 
But then when we're in trials, we're trying to get out of that trial so hard that we're not asking God, is there a reason why I'm here? I remember when, you know, I, since uh, I was 19, I've had issues with my hip. And I had, they found a tumor in there. And I actually have an artificial hip. And sometimes I have issues with it. One time in 2010, it came out of the socket. And I'm telling you, that is one of the most painful things ever. And I'm sweating and I'm crying. And they got me in the ambulance and they bring me to the, to the ER right here in, in Torrance. And they wheel me in and I'm just coming to, you know, like all the commotion just ended. And they, they wheeled me in and left me in the hallway. And that's when I, I, I started to ask the Lord, okay, God, why do you have me here? I understand I have issues with my hip and all stuff, but really... Why do you have me here? And just as I asked that, I looked over to my right. They had left me right in front of a gentleman on his bed, and he started to flatline. And all the nurses and everyone rushed over, and I had a chance to pray. I just, God, just I just released life over this guy. I released life. And I began to pray, and then they closed the curtain and all that, and then they wheeled me away, and I was asking the nurse, what happened? What happened to this gentleman? And she was being professional, obviously. She, she couldn't tell me what happened to this gentleman. But I was so curious, you know. And then as they were wheeling me back around to go get an x-ray, I saw the gentleman and I saw his wife talking with him. And I was like, praise God. What if all of that happened just so I could be there to pray? Are we really, do we really want to ask God, hey, use me, whatever it takes? Because that's what happens sometimes. You'll find yourself in a situation that you can only get there by some pretty terrible circumstances. But God used me that day, I believe. And He's going to use you too. Amen? Part of this thing is that we're still in our religious box, right? Maybe we've, we've read in the past or you've heard someone you admire pray and you, you think, i got to do it like them, you know? God doesn't do the same thing twice. The opposite of that religious pressure is being childlike. Really having childlike joy. You know, instead of trying to be like someone else or trying to be somebody, or whatever, you're already someone. Have that, that childlike joy actually shifts the atmosphere wherever you go, right? Having fun when you serve the Lord is so important. It's is that... As, you know, if you think about it as if He delights in you. Think about that, that, uh, that concept. God delights in you. So when you go around, you know, sometimes we get, we start serving the Lord or we're at work or we're at home and, and we're so serious, aren't we? Like I got to prove myself to somebody. You know, uh, some, some of you, uh, I'm getting this word, you're, you're, you're like Peter in the book of Acts. When he was... Uh, when he was going to go to Cornelius' house and he gets the vision of, you know, the animals on the sheet and God says, kill and eat. And he says, no, I'll never do that. You know, I'm a devout Jew. I'll never eat things that are unclean. I feel like sometimes we're in our religious boxes and we're saying no to the Lord and the Lord is saying, yes, I'm actually calling you to something that can be outside of your seriousness, you know? Because sometimes serving the Lord with childlike faith, it may look different. But God wants to use you to change your atmosphere, but also the atmosphere in the places that you go. I've seen people resist joy. It's, it's actually, I don't want to make fun of them, but it's actually kind of funny. One time I was preaching about joy and I let some beach balls go in our congregation. And they were bouncing around the congregation. People were hitting them around as I was preaching. It was really fun. But then there was those that were resisting. You know those? You, you ever see their faces? They're like this. You know, it's like, I will not be joyful. You cannot make me. You know? It's like, come on. Get the bug. Get that joy. It's our birthright. It's something that Jesus paid for. The joy of our salvation, right? But you see them. 
taking notes. I had people when we're in the spirit, I've seen people taking notes about what, you know, people and, you know, getting drunk or whatever in our congregation or some people getting slain in the spirit and people are taking notes. Now, it's like when we go to heaven, is it going to be like, get your notepads and your pens out? No way. I'm going to be elbowing Pastor Irwin out of the way to get to Jesus, you know? It's not going to be a time to take notes. Everyone's going to go wild. It's going to be a crazy party. Could you imagine? Let me just take my notes of how beautiful Jesus looks. You know, his shining brilliance. Oh, no, I'm going to be just trying to get as close as I can to him and just drop at his feet. It's going to be awesome, right? So don't resist. Don't resist that joy, you know? Jesus said, to inherit the kingdom... You have to become like a child, like a child. Children don't say, oh, we better not do this or that. You know, you ever get something out of a box, you know, a box at home or whatever. And what do the kids do? They like to take the fire, the styrofoam that's holding that component in. And they like to break it up into a million pieces and all those little foam balls go everywhere. They're not saying we better not do this because we'll have to clean it up later. They're just like, blah, you know, and they think about the consequences later. I'm not saying to make messes. I'm just saying, listen, in our, part of the kingdom is to find that place in your heart where you can laugh. You can laugh at yourself. You can laugh at circumstances. And sometimes laughing totally changes circumstance. Does that make sense? Because the circumstance isn't necessarily that powerful to control you. It's the hopelessness that comes with the circumstance. It's the discouragement that comes with the circumstance. So that when you begin to laugh at the circumstance, at what the enemy is doing, he loses his power over you. So you have to become like a little child. Proverbs 3, 5 through 10 it says, trust in the Lord completely. Do not rely on your own opinions. I think serious people have, are stuck on their own opinions. <laughs> With all your heart, rely on Him to guide you, and He will lead you in every decision you make. Become intimate with Him in whatever you do, and He will lead you wherever you go. Don't think for a moment that you know it all. Oh, don't ever be a know-it-all. Right? Always be learning and open to uh, what people have to say and all of that. Be like a child. For wisdom comes when you adore him with undivided devotion and avoid everything that's wrong. When you, then you will find the healing refreshment for your body and spirit, that your body and spirit long for. Glorify God with all your wealth, honoring him with your very best with every increase that comes to you, then every dimension of your life will overflow with blessings from an uncontainable source of joy. We want that joy. Joy is all throughout Scripture. Anytime you see the word gladness or joy, rejoicing, it's all throughout Scripture. Joy, right? I believe heaven is full of joy. I don't, we don't see the stories in the Gospels but I'll bet you Jesus was a lot of fun to be around. Amen. And that, so again, I want to just have a renewed mind in this sense that when trials come, that we don't get down, we don't get discouraged, but we look at them as an opportunity like, okay, all right, what's God going to do in this one? Let me tell you a story is, we, were, uh, we had two kids already, and then uh, we were going to have a third, but it ended up being twins. And so everything kind of changed at that point. And we had to get a new car because we couldn't put, you know, three car seats in the back of our pilot. And so we had to get a minivan at this point. And so we had just bought a house, and we're looking at each other like, we can't afford a new car. There's no way. And so we're trying to figure this out on our own. And then all of a sudden at home, and this is like a couple of months or a month before the twins were born, a pipe burst underneath our house. It was about 14 feet worth of pipe that was rusted out. 
and we're on a slab foundation. So you got to rip up the floor, you got to cut the concrete, and it's going underneath bedrooms and stuff. And we got an estimate on that thing. I mean, we had bubbles and water coming up through our wood floors. So we got an estimate. It was about $20,000. And we didn't have this. We had just got in a house. We, we need a minivan. And we were like, I remember driving home one day with this problem in the air, you know, when problems are just in the air. And I remember looking up to heaven and saying, God, this is your problem. I'm your child. And I just can't wait to see how you figure this one out. And it's something switched in me, you know, because I've seen over and over God come through so many times that I was just like, God, how are you going to do this one? It just ends up being like a, a curiosity thing, you know, after a while. And so what happened was um, I figured there was an opportunity here and there was a plumber who was working out an estimate. Didn't even, we didn't have the money to do this yet, but he was working out this estimate. And I said, well, while the plumber is here, I might as well witness to him. I might as well pray for him. So I found out his daughter wasn't doing well, got a chance to pray for him, minister to him. And I just figured while we're in this trial, we're going to use it for what it's worth, right? If the enemy's going to come at me, psh, I'm going to make sure he regrets it. And so I don't know what happened or how this plumber wrote this thing up because this was our issue. But he wrote this thing up somehow where the insurance paid for the whole thing. And so they're going to pay for it. And it was about $5,000 for just the plumbing, which they did. But to fix the floors and the tile and all that stuff was another $16,000, right? And so I said, okay, we're ready. we got a baby's coming. We need you guys to come and get this thing done. And so they said, oh, we can't come out for another four or five months. And we thought, well, how are we going to live like this? Everything's torn up, right? So I had to quickly find someone, and I found someone, and we did it together. And uh, Andrea's dad helped me, my dad helped me, and we, we ended up doing this thing for about 2000 which, guess what? The insurance company sent us a check for $14,000, and we bought a minivan. See how that works? God is so good. And, and I see it every single time so that now when trials come, I'm like, oh, okay, this is a setup. God, you're about to do something good. Because remember, Romans 8, 28, he works all things out for good. So if it's not good, he's not done. Amen. So there's joy. There's just joy in, in life. In, in James, when it says, consider it joy, my brothers, throughout, whenever you face trials, just a couple verses down, he says, and when you need it, when you need wisdom, ask him. He's generous. He'll give you wisdom. Why is that right after the passage about trials? It's because when you're in a trial, you need wisdom. And the wisdom is the why. God, what's going on here? I want to know your insight into this thing. Because this is not just by accident. I'm not just susceptible all the time to what the enemy's doing. He's not winning. So what's going on? What are you doing? That's wisdom. And he'll give it to you generously. I want, I want us to just look at trials differently with joy. You're gonna, if, if you get this, you're going to have joy 24-7. And no trial is going to ever take you out. Right? I want you... In the future, I could just see this. I want you guys to call your pastor when you're in a trial and say, Hey, pastor, I got to tell you something. I, I got this trial. It's really, really juicy, man. I don't know how I'm going to get over this thing. I don't know how God's going to do it. This is a big one. I'm telling you, I can already feel my faith rising. I can already feel my prayers going deeper. God's doing something in my heart because I have no way out of this thing except God. <laughs> Could you imagine that? Your pastor's going to say, Oh man, hey, could you pray for me? I don't have any trials right now. I don't have that excitement in my voice, in my faith right now. Could you imagine? Like as if trials are, are, are something that we just rejoice in. 
which is what the Bible says, right? That's, that's how you guys are going to approach this thing. Amen. There was this lady, uh, there's this lady in our congregation, her name's Lily. And uh, she's from Lenox. And one time we were in uh, Mexico on a missions trip. And we were at the beach, as a, we took a one day off out of the, the, the week-long missions trip. And I see her in the shallow water on her knees just praising God. And this woman just praises God all the time. I mean, she's just a bundle of joy. And I was watching her and I said, God, I want what she has. And God said to me, you'll never have what she has. And I thought, why? And then I started to think all the things that she has been through. This woman lost her husband who got murdered. She used to go with a baseball bat around um, parties trying to get her kids out of these drug scenes. I mean, she's had gone through things that I will never go through. And that's what God was saying. There is something produced in her that I may never have in this life because of what she's gone through. Does that make sense? So rejoice in the things that you go through. I have a lot of joy. And I think a lot of it has to do with the health issues that I've had since I was 19 years old. Because there, at times, there was nothing I, I wanted left in this life. I just wanted to go to heaven. And there's a longing in my heart for Jesus and for heaven. So anything in this life is just kind of bonus, you know? It's kind of like when you need something, you don't enjoy it as much as when you just want something and God provides it. But when you really need it, you know, it doesn't quite fulfill. But when you don't need it and God blesses you with it, it's such a joy, isn't it? Some of, there's some marriages out there where you think you need each other. You don't need each other. It's so much better when you just want each other. Right? I don't know. I just felt like that was a word of knowledge. So take that. I want to just give you, uh, just let you in on one encounter that I had in 2019. I had an uh, infection inside of my hip, my, my artificial hip. And it was pretty serious. So I had to go to the, the doctor. This was uh, December 31st. So right before my, my 2020 started the day before. <laughs> so I'm in the hospital. And I mean, I'm in tremendous pain. I had a fever, all that. I had to lay on a bed where they put a huge needle through just through my butt all the way to my hip so they could test some of the fluid that was in there. It was terrible. I mean, I don't wish this on anybody. And so after this whole ordeal and my wife, she just left and I'm in bed now with some meds. So I'm feeling a little bit better and I'm just tired and I'm just ready to go to bed and I just curl over and I'm just, oh, I'm so thankful to just get some sleep, you know, because I've been in pain for so long. And then I heard God say, oh, I'm glad that we're alone. And I had one eye open. I'm like, no, you want to talk now? I'm just, <laughs> I'm so tired, you know. <laughs> Me and God have a fun relationship. But he said, yeah, I want to talk to you. I want to show you some things. And this is true story right there in the hospital room. I opened my eyes. I saw three men hanging around. And I'm going to read this because I want to make sure I want to get the details right. Because I wrote this up right that night when I was encountering this, I saw three men hanging around in my, uh, around my hospital bed who looked like thugs, very conniving and dark. I told them, I think it's time for you to leave. They smirked and they said, until next time. As they were leaving, the last one pulled something out of my hip that looked like a black bamboo knife, about 18 inches long, then I asked God about them. He said, he started describing who they were. And he said, one gave you physical pain. 
One attacked your soul with hopelessness and discouragement. And I sure felt that, man. The other one was here to convince you to turn your back on me, but he didn't get very far. He said they travel in a pack for a goal. So pain hit me, then discouragement and hopelessness. And the third one, the real goal, was trying to, they were trying to get me to turn my back on God. Well, that one, that last one I saw, in his jacket, he had a bunch of medals in his jacket, rewards, of the people that he had defeated, the people that actually did turn their back on God. This was the strategy as the Lord revealed it to me. He says, when they first come, the, he, he said, this, this is our strategy, okay? He said, when they first come, look for them. So he's saying, when something happens in your life, look and identify who is attacking you. Then use your weapons to render their voice powerless over you. And how this happens, the Lord showed me, is really with surrender. Because the hopelessness and discouragement came because I didn't know what was going to happen to my health, to my hip, anything. I mean, this was a serious situation. And so you can imagine hopelessness, discouragement, really attacking my mind and my heart. Well, he was saying, to render them powerless is when you surrender yourself to me, you render their voice powerless. Okay, so Lord, what it looks like is, okay, Lord, you got me. I trust you. Even if I don't last this week, I trust you. I'm going to put my life into your hands. These are serious moments, right? But when you do that, then you can get your eyes on him. What was happening was I was just hearing their voices. I couldn't hear God's voice. I was just hearing the hopelessness, the discouragement. And that's all I, that was going on. It was like a whirlwind around me, right? Until I was able to surrender it and render their voices powerless. He says, know that I will rescue you. And in the meantime, find victory in the midst of their presence. So it's interesting. It's very interesting. Psalm 23 says, I, he makes me lie down in green pastures. I always think of that when I'm on the, in the hospital bed. He makes me lie down, right? There are certain times where there are certain breakthroughs that only happen in situations where you can't control it, you can't manipulate it. These are the times when your faith is strengthened. You see, God is at work all the time. He has not forgotten about you. Trials do not mean that God's absent. Trials means God's working. He's always working. You can find joy in that. He gave me a declaration when these things happen. It was powerful. And I want to read it to you. Okay? This is the declaration. He said, declare to these thugs. You may not see them like I did that night. But you definitely feel them, right? But you can make this declaration when you're in a hopeless situation. You have no power over me, and I will defeat you. My kids will cut off your heads. My grandchildren will chase you down across the globe so that the world will be free of your filth. You will regret ever messing with me. And I'm not talking about just blood, you know, your blood family. I'm talking about your spiritual kids, the ones that you pour into, right? That you have a legacy, no matter if it's a, if it's a natural family or a spiritual family, but the goal is that, hey, listen, you're going to regret this, right? You're going to regret this. It says, turn and face your trial. Look at the players in the trial. What's really coming at you in this trial? Because I'm telling you, when you have financial problems, finances aren't an issue for God. But I'm telling you what, the discouragement, the worry, the hopelessness, those are real issues. Those are the things that we have to address. Those are the things that steal your joy, right? Find out which things, what lies are coming at you. Who is really attacking you? Render their voices powerless by surrendering everything to God. Have confidence that God is going to rescue you. 
remember according to Romans 8.28 that if it's not good, God's not done. See, God doesn't always remove you from the trial. I, I remember when I used to, I'd feel the presence of the enemy and I used to rebuke him just over and over and over. And guess what? He never left until I said, okay, I'm going to switch up my strategies here. I'm going to just start worshiping. If you're going to be here with me, then you're going to suffer because I'm going to lift up praise and worship to my God. And you're going to have to be here and listen. And guess what happens? When they change the atmosphere with faith, when His presence comes in whatever situation, whatever room you're in, the enemy flees. So it's not screaming at them. It's, it's facing them in a sense of like, I'm okay being here because I know that the one who lives in me is greater than the one who lives in the world. I will defeat you and you will regret that you ever touched a child of God. Amen? And that when you get really good at trials, when you see that God is always at work and he can win with a pair of twos, then you know that he's got your back. He will never leave you or forsake you. And when you're going through things that are not pleasant, look for what God wants to do because it may not even be what He's doing in you. It may be for someone else. And so keep your eyes open because you're going to be so excited, so full of hope when you get this, when you understand, man, trials aren't the end or the, 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 they don't have to steal my joy and my hope. God works through them. And a lot of times He gives you breakthroughs that you've been praying for right in the midst of that trial. So let me just pray for you right now. I pray, God, just a huge blessing over New Dawn. Every mind, every heart. That our minds would be renewed. That we would see things in life that, that come that maybe are painful, maybe are or can, can threaten our very call. Maybe the voices are, are lying to us saying we're, we're not connected with the Holy Spirit or whatever that, the case may be. I pray that we would be so good, like es experts in trials, Lord, that we would be able to glorify you in those moments. We would be able to be transformed into the image of your Son. And I pray, Lord, that we would look for those divine appointments. That when we said, God, use us, that we meant it, Lord. So you can use us however you want, God. But I pray that there would be 24-7 joy in the life of new dawn. Every mind and every heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hey, Joe, stay here with me, Pastor Joe. Amen. Man, I'm telling you guys, that was amazing. Um, and, and you know, Pastor Joe, I, I will say this, and I'm, I'm you know, we, we always joke around, but I'm just being real sincere. As I was listening to you, um, I just know that that message was for me, like 100%. Like, I, wow. I, I just, um, it's just something that I've been asking the Lord about and making sh making sure that my joy is not circumstantial, you know? And um, so I appreciate that word. I believe it was a word for many, and it was it was definitely a divine assignment, a divine assignment on how to handle trials in our life. I believe that there was a lot of prophetic uh, words in there, especially the one that I'm going to take time to process was the one, the vision that you saw of the three thugs uh, that, that were in the hospital room. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm, I'm definitely going to, I believe that was the Lord just giving revelation of how, you know, the schemes of the enemy, you know. Yeah. And so I'm so grateful for that. But um, yeah, listen, we, we want to do something before, I'm going to ask Joe to stay with me real quick, but before we go, um, I want to ask you if you guys would just prepare your hearts um, as we give today. We're going to worship the Lord in our giving, and um, you know, this is something that we do. You know, Joanne and I, when we were on vacation, we were talking to this couple that we had met at the beach, 
And, uh, and so they brought up tithe and offering, and we were talking about that. And I said, you know, I said, and I just was sharing with them, is that when we teach about tithe and offering, we teach from a, bi- a biblical point of view, not a need-based point of mm. view. So meaning, uh, you know, hey, the church is, it needs to pay this. or no, We don't do any of that. Like, we just, right. like, we, the first thing when we give, it's worship unto the Lord, Amen. period. It's just, yeah. it's worship unto the Lord. And I know the Bible says to do it, but our hearts need to be poised and say, yes, Lord, you know, I just, I'm here, I am. And, and it's about worshiping the Lord in our giving. And so that's what we want to do today. We want to pray with you. And I believe that we are in the exact season of generosity. We're in the season mm-hmm. where God wants us to even take a step of a greater step of faith and trusting him in all areas, including our giving. You know, um, I, I have to process the message today because, you know, about trials, because it, God is going to require me to take a step of faith in that area. But just like you're giving, this is same thing, you know, if it's hitting your heart, you'd be like, man, I don't know if I can do this. And when we were talking to that couple at the beach, they were just saying, I don't know if we can do this and everything. And they took a step of faith and they started sharing the testimonies of just like, Nothing changed economically for them, but when they started tithing, they just saw such a difference mm. in their life. And I was like, well, I said, you know, I said, we live like that. That's That's been the story of our life, just trusting God and and, and just that's it, just trust. And I've heard yeah. you and your wife's stories, like that. just the, the van story is just so amazing, you know. He provides. And, uh, yeah, just, yeah, wow. he does. He's He is. He's Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And so, listen, on the screen, you're going to see right there on the right, there's three different ways that you can give. Of course, you can go to newdawnla.com and, and give safely there uh, through PayPal. And then you can also mail it in. You'll see our P.O. box there. And we love getting your letters. We love getting cards. Even today, I was opening a couple of cards and uh, people writing notes with their, with their giving that they sent in and just uh, you know saying Merry Christmas or we love you and praying for you. It's so encouraging all the time. And you can also give through Cash App and uh, we encourage you to do that as well. We're actually uh, in the process right now of, of uh, uh, Deacon Marcus will be uh, finding some other ways that we can give. Um, I don't I don't want to call them all out yet because but you know but I just there's several other ones that we want to do and make it easy for you guys to give amen so we're going to pray for you I'm glad Pastor Joe's with me we're going to just agree we're going to stretch our hands Pastor Joe if you could just stretch your yeah. hands towards mm-hmm. the camera and Father we just thank you for everyone who's watching we thank you for the word that went forth we ask you in the name of Jesus that you would bless each and every person as they give We thank you, God, that you're the God of the supernatural. You're a supernatural provider. You are faithful and you are good. And God, I just thank you, Lord, that receive this like the the Bible talks about that when they would worship you, there would be it would be like a sweet smelling savor when they would put those offerings on the altar. It would be like a fragrance unto heaven. And I thank you, Father, that as we give that that it would be a fragrance, Mm. Lord, of our hearts saying, Lord, here, here you go. We love you, God, and we worship you. So, Lord, bless your people as they give. We thank you right now. We thank you for the spirit of joy Mm. hitting us right now. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Hey, listen, before you go, um, so I, I want to take advantage of just having a man of God here. And uh, <clears throat> I just want to say a couple of things before we dismiss and, and, and let you go. But, but Holy Spirit, we thank you right now. We open ourselves up for everything that you want to do for the supernatural. And I just thank you in the name of Jesus that you minister right mm-hmm. now, mm-hmm. right now, that you release great faith and, and I just, I want to share this with you real quick. When Joanne and I were um, out of town and uh, we were walking by, we left the restaurant, we ate lunch and we were walking by a, uh, a lady who sold pearls. She sold like pearl necklaces. It was like this little counter in, in the middle there. And I was walking by her and I said, Joanne, just come with me. And the Lord had given me, I was sharing with this, uh, sharing this mm-hmm. with you earlier. And uh, I was walking by and the lord told me that she had two children a boy and a girl and that her heart was really uh you know that she was really concerned about them and just to declare a blessing over them so it was scary i'm not gonna lie but i walk over and i said hey her name was lonnie and i said my name is erwin and i said i'm a christian and i said you know i just i felt by the lord that i was walking by i said you have you have two children right and she said yes and then I said, a boy and a girl. And she said, yes. So I was like, praise God, you know, that the word was right, you know. And then I just said, listen, I just felt you don't know me, but I feel led to pray 
for your children and pray for a ministry. You know, God wants to do the supernatural everywhere you go if you're just available. So Father, we just stretch our hands mm -hmm. and in the name of Jesus, just believe that this season will be like no other. We release the supernatural presence of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. right now. We thank you, God, that you're doing signs, wonders, and miracles mm -hmm. everywhere, that you're God healing bodies, you're restoring lives, you're restoring marriages, Lord. We just thank you right now. Even as I shared that story, God, and let faith rise up and, and realize that we can all just step out of ourselves yeah. and minister to someone. Joe, I don't know if you, if you mm. ha have something in your heart. I just Hallelujah. feel like there's Holy someone Spirit. who uh, has having issues with their elbow mm. and that the Lord wants to heal you. Mm. So God, we just lift up the elbows out yeah. there. If there's anyone who's having that particular issue mm. and we just release the healing presence of Jesus over that elbow yeah as you said that i just uh, i was seeing backs and just uh, it wasn't just it wasn't back pain it was back spasms which mm -hmm. i know caused pain but i saw back spasms and i i just ask you father to right now release yeah. just that you would freeze that up lord stop that stop those back spasms and that back would relax right now in the authority of jesus yeah, name amen. hallelujah amen. hallelujah 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 hallelujah, hallelujah. I think I, last time mm. we were here doing a healing service, I got headaches, but I'm getting it again. Mm. Uh, migraines, um, even um, even sinus pressure. Yeah. And so we, we, we just release healing over headaches in Jesus' name. Yes, yes, let, the, let those headaches mm. stop. stop and I command the pain to leave mm. in Jesus' mighty name. Yeah, we also pray in the name of Jesus for marriages, that God, you restore yeah. marriages, Father God. God, what the enemy has tried to do to divide marriages. Mm. We just thank you, Lord, that, that you're mm. releasing your Holy Spirit. You're bringing healing to marriages right now. Yeah, Hallelujah. thank you. I also feel like there's a, a group of people that in this season feel mm. like they're stuck. Mm. You know, that, that, that spirit is kind of pervading the yeah. atmosphere, you know, that we're stuck. But you know, with the Lord, we're never stuck. Mm. And I feel like the Lord's going to give you strategy so that you can see, oh, my purpose is still valid and it can still go forward in this season, this crazy season that we're in. My purpose is still valid. And God's going to show you how to move forward, whether that be through phone calls, text. There's things that you can do to uh, use your gifts and minister to the Lord and minister to other people during this season. You are not stuck. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Well, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this service. We thank you for the word that went forth yeah, about you, joy. And Father God, I thank you, Lord God. Even as Joe, as he was speaking, his wife had prophetically spoken uh, towards that uh, when when she was uh, sharing with earlier Lord God and I thank you Lord that you're you are removing people from being stuck Lord God and and just being overwhelmed and just the season overtaking them Lord so we receive those words from him and his wife and and God thank you for this word of joy I definitely sense something has broken Lord and that, that God I thank you that we're going to see things differently Lord and we're going to stand in faith knowing that you are in control Father so Lord bless each and every person as we dismiss today Father let may they be just enjoy the rest of their Sunday Lord and whenever they're watching this sermon let them enjoy and receive this word Father do something great this Christmas season fill us with joy we give you praise in yeah. Jesus' name. We love you guys. Amen. And uh, glad I'm hanging with my buddy, Pastor So good Joe. being with you this yeah. morning. Amen, amen. And uh, we will we'll talk to you guys soon. We'll see you next week and get ready for Christmas. Amen. <laughs>